Good morning and thank you for dropping by to play some guitar with me here today on the couch. Boy, do we have a good one for you today. 1985 is the year that I graduated from high school and that spring a British band known as Tears for Fears released a hit-filled album called Songs from the Big Chair. The album was number one on the Billboard music charts that year with number one hit songs like Shout, Head Over Heels, and today's tutorial, Everybody Wants to Rule the World. I'm just now realizing how right they were. We'll talk a little bit more about that later, but for now, let's jump right into the intro. An interesting thing about this song is that if you try to play along with the um, album version or, or one of the videos, uh, you'll find that it doesn't sound quite right. And the reason for that is that they sped the tape up a little bit um, to make the song a little bit faster, but it also raised the pitch of everything just a little bit when they do that. Another song um, that that was done on, for example, is Rambling Man by the Allman Brothers. Uh, if you try to play along with that in standard tuning, it's just a little bit off because uh, the guitars are all just a little bit uh, sharp. And the reason is, is because they sped up the tape. So I have all of my strings tuned just a little bit sharp. So the low E should sound like this. The A string or A sharp. The D, the G, the B. It's not far enough to get it all the way up to a C, it's just that the note is slightly sharp. And then there's the high E. So um, our introduction to the song starts out with a slide on the G string from the seventh fret up to the 11th fret. And when you make that slide, be sure and hold like a firm firm pressure against the fretboard because you want to hear the slide all the way up and you want to hear the note still ringing when you get to 11. So uh, after you get to 11, we're going to take, and, and, and I do that with my middle finger because my index finger is going to go right here on the 10th fret of the B string once the slide's complete because that's my second note. Now for the remainder of the introduction, I'm gonna keep those two fingers kind of planted there. So I've got my index finger on the 10th fret of the B, my middle finger on the 11th fret of the G, and my ring finger is going to modulate off and on this 12th fret of the B string. So the first time we slide up, then we go the 10th fret of the B, back to the G, 12th fret of the B, back to the G, and now that sets us in a pattern of two on the 10th fret to one on the 12th fret. So I also, I keep the pick, I alternate pick, but I'm keeping the pick right here between the G string and the B string. My G strings are all upstrokes, my B strings are all downstrokes to make it more efficient. You can play a little bit faster that way. So it does one time on the single note pattern and then seven times on the double pattern on the 11th to the single on the 12th. After you've gone through that a total of eight times, we go into the main verse. I know there's different ways to play that. There's different videos of people showing different ways. The tabs are all a little bit different. Um, to my ears, what sounds the best is this chord, and everybody pretty much agrees on this first chord. That's where it gets different. So this is kind of like an A chord, like an A major, but we're lifting the index finger off. So you're left with just two fingers on the second fret of the B and the G strings. Everything else is open, but we're really only playing strings four through one at most. Even if you stop at two, that's okay. And then the next one, just lift everything off and play strings four through two. And that's just kind of a, a G chord. Uh, if you want it to sound a little bit fuller, you can also put um, your index finger on the third fret of the G string. 
makes it just a little bit fuller there. Um, when I see him play it live, it seems that he's just doing this. He's playing that part open. Um, and then there's a synth bass, is the programmed bass that's keeping the time in the background. And it's playing a D note over and over again. It's kind of staccato. It plays it real quick and then cuts it off. To thicken that up and make it sound a little bit more like the record, what I think sounds good is if I put my index finger on the fifth fret of the A string, which is a D note, right? Because it's A, B, C, D, D at the fifth fret. And I play it along with the D string open. It's kind of a little rhythmic pattern there. Right after the third time, as soon as you've done that third time through, it goes back to the. It's almost like a little skip beat there, getting back to the um, the A chord or the modified A chord. Um, and then it just keeps going. It goes through that a total of eight times. And then it goes into the chorus. And the chorus starts out with an E um, minor. It's the first note. That goes to an F sharp minor. That goes to a G, which I'm playing a G major bar chord. Back to the F sharp minor. Back to the E minor, and then um, it goes through another time, but it goes, instead of turning back, it goes all the way up to the A, but this time it's faster. The first time it's through, it's like two, three, four, two, three, four, two, three, four, two, three, four. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. The next time is... So the next time it, it's every two beats instead of every four beats. After we come out of that chorus, uh, we're going to go back into our regular verse. We're going to go um, through that main verse riff eight times. After the eighth time, we're going to go back into the chorus. We're going to do a complete um, circle on the chorus. And then we go into a little three chord bridge coming out of that second chorus. It's going to start with a ringing G chord. And I'm really, when I strum down, I'm going to focus more on the trebly strings. To my ear, at least, it sounds more like the record that way. Then we're going to go to a um, D chord rooted on the fifth string. It's just two quick blasts. Then we go to an A chord rooted on the sixth string, A major. Again, two quick blasts, and then back to this uh, G major chord rooted on a sixth, and that's going to ring. We're going to do it three times, but on the last note, instead of going back to this G, we're going to go back to the E minor right here. And then we're going to go back in, and we're going to do the complete chorus again. After um, that chorus, so it's Full chorus, bridge, full chorus, coming out of that, um, it starts with the verse again, but it also starts the guitar solo, and that's what we'll learn now. Our guitar solo starts with the exact same lick we began the song with. We're going to slide up from 7 to 11 and then go into that pattern of uh, one time and then two times. going to play that four measures or total 16 times before we hear the second lick and that first lick continues underneath because the second lick is actually played on the keyboard however we can adopt it for guitar it sounds good it's like this what that is is um, we're on the high E string 10 9 7 and then we're going to go 10 to 7 on the B. And then we're going to go 8, 10 on the B. And then we're going to go to 7 on the G. And then there's a little double beat 
uh, seven on the G, seven on the B to get us started again. Play that twice, start it a third time, but the third time it ends differently. When we get to the seven on, seven on the G for the skip beat, instead of going back to the B, we're gonna go to the D and we're gonna go nine seven. And that gets us into the next part of the solo. So the way that entire lick is gonna sound is this. kind of start over again in the background but it also brings us into the next lick of the solo for the next section or the next lick we want to bar the second fret of strings one two and three and then we're going to modulate um, our middle and our ring finger off and on uh, the middle finger is going to be on the third fret of the b string ring finger is going to be on the fourth fret of the g string so we've got strings barred at two there we've got three and four covered and we're also going to do some palm muting here at least in the beginning of this lick uh, it starts out it's kind of like the pattern uh, that we started the song with it's two three and four covered two twice so it gets in that pattern the first time it's just one kind of speeds up, it starts out slow and speeds up. And then we've got one, two, three. Um, that's just on the E and the B string. Uh, so I've, I've hold this bar here at the second fret the whole time, but now I've got my um, middle finger on the second fret of the B string. And then we're gonna go two, and then three and four covered on the B and G, and then we're gonna do it again. The second time though, we're gonna play two there open, so it's. Then we've got this lick. What that is, is a double stop on the E and the B string. I'm gonna play three times at 10. I'm gonna slide down to seven and play that twice and slide down to five. So um, after I get down here to five, twice between this position at five and seven and then down here playing the B and the G strings as kind of a call and answer type scenario. So after I've done that twice then I'm going to go back here to this original position so I'm playing the um, the E and the B strings and then to open and then the B and the G covered and then there's a couple call and answers right here where I'm on the B and the G at the second and then covered open on the E and the B and then covered and then that leads us back into the chorus. After the guitar solo, we go through the um, chorus two more times, and then you have this little blues lick. So that's a pre-bent uh, B string on the fifth. We're gonna play it and let it down. We're gonna stay on the B, three, five, three. And then the three rings out with a little vibrato. Um, 
goes through the chorus again after that little lick, and then we start the outro guitar solo, which is um, pretty unique. It's fun to play, but it's interesting. Uh, it starts with 10th fret on the E. We're going to pull off to open, or you can play open. Then we're going to go 10th fret on the B, and then open on the E again, and then two notes on the 11th fret of the G. Or... Then we have this lick next. So that's the fourth fret of the G. I'm going to play it twice. And then we're going to do a little hammer on pull off on the fifth fret. Back to the seven on the D here. Back to the four on the G, back to the seven on the D. Next part. So that's a little, a little um, pinch harmonic. So we're, we're pinching. We're holding just a little bit of the pick out. We're letting the string roll off her finger as we bend up, and then seven on the D, and then four on the G, and then seven to nine on the G, and then a bend up on nine. Like that. Um, next phrase. So that is seven on the G. We're gonna slide from five to seven on the D. And then we're gonna slide from eight to ten on the B. And then we're gonna play ten on the B, ten on the E a couple times with a bend. And a slide down. Again. Then immediately after that, we've got this. So that's a bend up on seven of the G. And then we're gonna play seven on the D. Bend up on the nine of the G. Play the seven on the D again. Slide from nine to, nine to 11 on the G. And we're gonna bend up when we get there. And then we're going to climb up a little bit from that um, 11th on the G. We're going to go 10 on the B, 9 on the E, and 10 on the E. So that whole little piece. Oops. And then the very last piece, you've got an open G. We've got a bend up on the um, eighth fret of the B, and then a bend and vibrato on the seventh fret of the D. And then it kind of fades out after that. There's some, some more notes, but it's, it's hard to follow um, what they're doing because the song just tails off. And uh, that's the end of the song. <laughs> Welcome to your life, there's no turning back. What a great opening lyric. In 1985, Everybody Wants to Rule the World was on the radio and MTV almost constantly. At that time, I didn't really give much thought to the title, but as time passes, I've noticed more and more people are digging their heels in. No one wants to even consider that they're on the wrong side of an issue, let alone admit that they are. It seems to me that there is very little gray these days. Every issue is black or white, and people are planting their flags and are willing to die on every hill. We have to realize that there is an objective truth. There is a right answer, and if we all lean on our own understanding, we wind up with the chaos that we see today. Recently, I watched a video of a man threatening violence towards another because their definitions of success were different. Another had supposed educators arguing that the answer to a simple math equation can have different answers for different people. I know for a fact that God's Word says that Jesus is the way and the truth and the life. I know that it says when you know the truth, the truth will make you free. I know that it says the end times will be a time of division and a time of deception, and I see that happening now more than it ever has. If you are looking for what's true, 
I'd encourage you to pick Jesus. Seek him with all your heart and you will find him. The truth is never too far for us to find. If you found any value or benefit here, I'll ask that you give this video a thumbs up down below. Please also subscribe if you've not yet done so. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you back again soon right here on the couch. Thank you.